y'all. Welcome. It is week seven or the end of week seven of Crafty Hope prompts and my prompts of black pen, texture stamp, and two or more stencils. If you don't know what this is, I'll refer you up here to when I made this card and it'll explain what Crafty Hope prompts is and hopefully encourage you to join in. But today we're going to get to the project for week seven and I think that's going to be actually altering this can. This is the can I have been keeping my prompts and cards in and I I think I mentioned in one of my videos that what would I need this for once I get all my prompts drawn. Well I can put my cards in it. Duh. So I think that's what I'm going to do today. I have not pulled out the supplies like I usually do because I kind of I'm freewheeling it this week y'all. I'm going to start, I think, by cutting off the label that's on here so that I will have a template for the size of this, or at least a general idea. So that's where I think I'm going to start. And that's exactly where I started. I used a craft knife to split just on the side of where I could see the adhesive was. And I'm going to peel this up and use it as a template. Now I realized it was about four and a half inches high and I kind of use that later in this. So I grabbed some, this is just some, what is it, cardstock that I know I wouldn't use for anything because I don't really care for the color. And you can see that I have already tried to write this out and it didn't work out great in the four and a half width. But I knew that size wasn't important so I went ahead and just used the smaller portion here which is I don't know what is that it would be three inches something like that four maybe four inches there and I'm writing the words get inspired with a like large tip marker because what my plan is is to create a stencil of my own with my own handwriting so once I have that written out as big as I want I've got a uh, what do you call it? <laughs> a self healing cutting mat and my craft knife again. And I am going to cut this out. Now the hardest part for me, I will tell you is the letters that have like a hole on the inside. I knew those holes needed to be attached to the outside, like this G here. So I had to figure out how to get that done. But once I got just a general idea of that, and y'all, it's just make these little slits from that inside hole to the outside hole and don't cut over them. That's, that's all it is. I had to actually go look at one of my own stencils to kind of like make sure I had that right in my head. And I kept looking at that thinking, well, that's not right, is it? And then I tried to pull it out and I was like, no, I'm supposed to keep it there. <laughs> so it took me a little while. But as I cut, really the whole gist of it was to make sure you just keep moving that piece of paper around rather than your craft knife. If you can keep your craft knife down, then you can get a really nice cut to get a yeah, to get your own stencil made. So from here, I pulled out the jelly plate and I've got, this is my larger one. It's like an eight by 10 or something. I'll have a link to it. And I decided I, that's how I would use stencils. But the first thing I wanted to do was to get a base color of paint, or at least that's what I thought I wanted to do. And I wanted it in neutrals, so I've got some browns and a black and a white, and I'm trying to get like a neutral base on some fairly thin paper that I've got. It's, I don't even know what the paper is, y'all. It's a big roll that basically came with my house. <laughs> so, but I get, it's thin, and I knew it would be, it would, it would be thin enough to wrap around that paper and not have a problem. So I, yeah, I put all those browns and stuff down on my jelly plate and I'm kind of just getting, yeah, a big bunch of mud. That's kind of what I wanted or what I thought I wanted. And I've got these two strips cut down that I thought would go, you know, I would do two of them and see how, you know, if there are bits and pieces I liked. And so I'm just picking up some of the yeah, this color that's on the jelly plate. And y'all, uh, this, I'm not going to use those papers. I'll, you'll see here in a little bit. They, it doesn't get better. <laughs> I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. It's not the browns that I wanted, really. 
And yeah, so at this point, I'm just trying to clean up the jelly plate for what comes next. And that's going to be using my Distress Oxides and a whole flurry of stencils. And this is how I'm doing my two or more stencils. You can see I'm putting my Distress Oxide down, putting my stencil down, and then picking it up with that those strips of paper that I had put the brown on. Now, both the stencil and the jelly plate still have um, this beautiful inky on it. And so, yeah, I went and grabbed some just white copy paper and that's what I'm picking up some of this with. And y'all, that's what I'm going to end up using on my can because I liked the white space in the background. Go figure. All right, I am good. I've got this sped up a bit, but I'm going to play some music while you watch me go through this process of doing the jelly prints with my Distress Oxides. This is my last color I put on here and it's um, a yellow because I wanted to make sure that yellow was the top color for this since the cap of my my coffee tin is yellow so I wanted to make sure that definitely made an appearance so you can see those two strips I did with the brown were awful whereas these just pieces of copy paper which are also nice and thin and will wrap around the can um, are great so I'm going ahead and just trimming off the edges where the white didn't get quite I mean where it's still kind of white on the edges and so I'm going to do that with both of them super quick just putting it down on my paper cutter and getting those edges off and then I'm going to take a look at both of these pieces of paper and decide because I knew they weren't long enough on their own to wrap around the can and if I cut them in half they wouldn't be high enough so I was going to have to stick them together anyway so I'm going to take a look at them to decide which parts of each of these I like the most so I'll grab that yeah <laughs> that keep the paper cutter out and kind of measured 
my template there and it's about four and a half inches high so I'm trying to figure out yeah there I'm trying to figure out which part I like the most so I can cut off the part I like the least but now I've got that what I trimmed off is going to be beautiful for something later so I'm trimming these pieces off and then once I get it trimmed I'll just match the edges and overlap them just a little like half an inch and yeah and I'm just gonna glue it with my uhu glue stick <laughs> and y'all that was one of my little eye dots <laughs> from where I cut out my stencil now I know and with that stencil y'all ugh, I know I could just hand write on these two pieces of paper but I this with the stencil for me it was more about the experiment of making my own stencil because I've never really done that like that before and it also, you know, I could put any color of paint I wanted through that and not just be limited by the, the markers that I have. So now I'm bringing in another one of my prompts and that is texture stamp. So I've got this great texture stamp that I picked up at, y'all, I think I picked it up at Goodwill. I, I probably paid too much for it at Goodwill, but I love it. It's bubbles. It's like foamy bubbles. So I'm using it stays on and I can't remember the color but it's a purple and just putting it all over that texture stamp and yeah and since the texture stamp is bigger than my paper just about I'm just putting the paper onto the texture stamp it seemed easier to do that than the other way and once I get that down I decide you know I could have been done with texture stamps but I decided to go ahead and bring in some more just to get you know some layering in there so the next thing I'll grab that oh y'all this new ledger stamp from Tim Holtz I'm using on everything and then archival ink and sepia and again layering that out and then I mean putting the ink pad down and the sepia didn't show up very well on this because it's not really like a dark color but it's fine when you look at it very closely you can see it. it it really does work it's just I don't know that you could see it in this video and so I'm just getting it in spots where I thought I needed a little more texture and like I said I couldn't see it so I wasn't super happy with it so I decided to grab something else that would make a bit of a more bold statement so I grabbed this Tim Holtz stamp I don't even know it's like from a texture st set and my regular black stays on and yeah I'm gonna add some black to it like this and I still need to bring in black pen so that is the next thing I knew I needed to tackle and so while I'm doing all this I'm thinking about it what can I do and I thought some acemic writing or some just writing on my strips there would be good so I grabbed a food ball pen and uh, y'all, I'm not really good at the acemic writing there. Those are actual words. I think some of them, when I look at the, the close-ups, I'm like, I know exactly what that says. <laughs> and it says stuff like create every day and be inspired and things like that. I tried some nonsense stuff there just so I could get it smaller, but it's, it's not great. And so for my last little idea of pen I will grab a paint pen and it's it's actually called a paint marker but yeah I've already the food ball pen is a pen but I'm going to take that sharpie marker here in just a second to get a little more black on there and I'm going to pump it a bit to get some of the ink up to the front of it and then sling it I was having a little trouble this one's almost empty so it didn't want to do that much and I'm turning this so that all of my uh, uh, splatters don't go in the same direction. And I was doing my best because I was really afraid it would get as hard as I was trying to sling that it was going to get on the camera. <laughs> and it didn't, fortunately. And I start to dry this, but then I decide that it doesn't really feel like me. So I'll go ahead and add some coffee. This is instant coffee. That has dried up and I reconstitute it with some water and I'm just going to splatter it as well on here just like that and then I'm going to dry the whole thing now I'm going to admit to y'all that this is not my favorite project for this series it's um I really I knew from the beginning I would try to decorate this but looking at it it still feels too I don't know messy or something but I got to use all of my 
prompts and kind of experiment with them a little. And when I look at the close-ups of this, I do like it, but it's something that I may, as I use it, add other things to it that feel more like me, maybe some doodles on parts of it or some other dots or things like that, that I'm, I may add later because looking at it like this, I'm like, holy moly, that is a mess, <laughs> but it's okay. It's my mess. So I tore this down to the size I need. And so there I have another piece of paper that I can use for, uh, for collaging later. All right. So there is my, my get for the inspired. And I have got, y'all had to, <laughs> had some trouble getting that, that paint out of that bottle. So I got too much again and I'm using that stippling brush and you can, I don't know if you can see in this one for the G for the E on the get, I forgot to create the, the little att attacher from the inside to the outside edge. So I'm, I'm going to do something later to kind of fix that, but because it's, it's just a really tiny one. I knew it didn't matter as much as it did for some of the, the other ones, like the get, I had to have those attached. And you can see that, have you see my little happy? I was so happy it worked. It was like, oh my gosh, I did this. So I'm going to also do that on the inspired as well. And I do like this a little bit more once I get the words on it because that it, it brings the words, you know, or the central portion of this. The only problem is once it wraps around that can, you don't ever see the whole words, but I know what it says. And um, like I said, I'm really happy I made the stencil. I've I actually added it to my stencil box with my other stencils. So it's now, you know, it's a little flimsy, the, the connectors between the letters. I really recommend doing two of them and not just one like I did because the ones where I did one, they're kind of floppy and they want to come out, but I did it. I did it. <laughs> All right. So there it is. I'm going to take a little paintbrush here in just a second and connect, yeah, connect all where my little divots were so that those aren't so separated. And that's, that's going to be, it. and again, I could have drawn this with my paintbrush and just written those words out. But for me, this was about trying something new. So I use stencils in quite a few ways on here. Now I thought I was going to try to add some shadow with my juicy black pen here, but I decided it, it just didn't really add a whole lot to it. It wasn't really bleeding on that paper on top of the, of the layers of the, of the distress oxides. So instead I grab my Signo white gel pen and I'm going to go around these just to give them some highlights. And I'm going to do this, like go around all of them twice and kind of get inside and outside the edges to give it a real sketchy, sketchy feel, which I love. So this is going to take me a second. I'm sorry. My head is in the way there, but I was trying to get over it so I could see it because I was having a hard time uh, I guess seeing the edges from too much of a distance and this really yeah and y'all we're coming to the end of this I'm 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 you know I'm happy with the things that I accomplished the things I had tried I've never tried the distress oxides on my gel plate before I tried that I've never tried cutting out my own like word stencil I've cut out other little shapes with my but I've never done the letters and had to connect the things on the inside and that kind of stuff. And I'm kind of excited about that, that I think before I've had craft knives that weren't so great and I've got one that's a little more secure. Oh, and here's where I fix the E. Y'all, I'm just going to make like a teardrop shape or a little scribble inside that E there. It looks like an E now. Done. Fixed. All right, that G is a little wet still where I tried that other technique, so I'll dry it. And then, y'all, I'm just going to use some Finnebear. Well, we'll get to that. But I wanted to, you know, the, all the things I did in this experiment, that's part of the reason I wanted to do this project or do this challenge was to use some of these materials in different ways and try different things. And, you know, a lot of times when I use stencils, I only use one stencil. So that's why the two or more stencil prompt was in there was to get me to use more than one in projects. And I really like Monday's card and I'm glad that I tried several stencils in this as well. 
All right, guys. I am using, you saw some 3D gloss gel from Finnebear because I knew it was it's super sticky. And I'm just going to roll this over and get it stuck down. Um, and in fact, I wanted to realign it a little, but it was already sticking so fast that I couldn't peel it up without ripping it. So that is, yeah, that is high praise there for <laughs> glue, for especially going paper to metal. I'm... Yeah, I'm going to have to buy me some more of that gloss gel. Anyway, that is going to be it. I'm going to give you some looks at this. You can see some of the detail inside or on that that I did with all of the layers and everything. And I'd love to know what you think and how you are using either these prompts or the prompts you pulled. And, you know, just leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and come back later and see what, what week eight is going to hold for us. All right. Bye.